Summer in the Jersey Shore. Over 100,000 tourists flock to these beaches to soak up the sunshine and erect colourful tents. But the overcast days still belong to the locals. A gang of seagulls haunt this beach looking for unsuspecting crabs or sometimes backpacks. Young Ziggy is three years old. He has yet to obtain the adult plumage of his older brother, Major Tom. Although he is a herring gull, he is often seen hanging with the laughing gull gang. They are a bad influence. Ziggy is limbering up for the day's activities, stretching his legs with long struts, preening his feathers, and hoping that the day warms up so him and the gang can do some food raiding. But it looks like it might be a quiet day at the beach. If only that big green human machine would leave him alone so he could make his plans for the day. Major Tom has learned the big green thing is of no harm to seagulls and occasionally dredges up the unsuspecting crab. But Ziggy and his gang still can't help but run away. Hey guys, false alarm, act casual. The overcast weather also provides an opportunity for the beach bunnies to move to greener pastures. With fewer humans out and about, the older, braver bunnies can raid the delicious gardens of the brown household. The carefully tended lawn grows the best flowers in town, a treat that is hard to resist. But wait, what was that noise? Is it one of the two-legged humans? No, it sounds like something with four legs. Better start moving towards the safety of the bushes. It's a Remy dog. Remy is not from around here and has some strange obsessions, including the glorious garden hose. The steady flow of water smashing her right in the face, well, there's just nothing better. The lone beach bunny watches from the safety of the bushes. He'll have to report back immediately to his burrow mates about the arrival of this horrible beast. He's never seen an animal able to dislocate its jaw to inhale water like that. What he doesn't know is that Remy is a harmless silver lab, a lover of all creatures great and small. This is her second visit to the Jersey Shore, and it's a welcome change from the mountains of rural Idaho. She can hardly wait to start exploring further than her grand human's backyard. Meanwhile, the Aristocats are observing the world from their ivory tower. They've had the place to themselves this morning, the perfect vantage point to spy on the neighbours. Mac and Minnow are hoping their hours of observation will help their attempts to overthrow the humans and become the lords of the tower. But alas, the humans have arrived. They constantly use the cat's domain as their own and Mac for one is unimpressed. The humans are always trying to trick him with promises of catnip and pets, and he can only resist for so long. He knows he's smarter than any human, but those weird furless paws of theirs are just so good at itching those hard to reach places. Perhaps plotting the overthrow of the humans can wait just a few more hours. Disgusted by Mac's lack of self-control, Minnow fled the tower and now she awaits her evening meal. Soon she will have devised a way to get her own access to the fridge. Soon. Mac and Minnow aren't the only royalty in town this time of year, with the monarch butterflies arriving from their winter resting grounds in Mexico. They have come to the Jersey Shore for one reason and one reason only, breeding. Elizabeth has chosen this yard to be her breeding grounds because of the abundance of milkweed plants. Her soon-to-hatch caterpillars are extremely fussy and will eat nothing else. She is looking for the perfect mate, and when he finds her, they begin circling each other in the air before joining. This wasn't exactly what Elizabeth had in mind. Knowing this could take up to 16 hours really doesn't make things seem any better. Finally, she's free. Now Elizabeth can find the perfect place to lay her eggs, and in just a few days, her first caterpillars will emerge. Are you sick of boring old TV, watching the same shows over and over again? Why is there never anything good on? Get on your computer, go to YouTube and type in Chuffed Adventures and all your entertainment woes will be over. Yes, I think we're ready. I'm a little nervous, but we're literally just going to drag her over with ropes. So. 
This girl's great. It's the best thing I've ever seen. Or better yet, visit patreon.com to get exclusive behind the scenes footage and direct access to the stars of the show. For as little as $1.50 Australian a month, you can help save animals all over the world while accessing premium entertainment. Visit www.patreon.com slash chuffedadventures. With the sun shining, the beach bunnies are up early to forage for breakfast before the arrival of the strange, furless, two-legged beings. On a day like today, they may only get an hour of sunshine before the beach becomes packed. Little Petal is taking advantage of the fruits on offer by the rosehip plant. Just like Petal, this plant is an invasive species, introduced by the two leggeds long ago. Petal has been grazing with her little brother Leaf, but he seems to have wandered off somewhere. She scans the dunes looking for him, but he is on his own mission, leaving the safety of the dunes. Petal is worried. The two leggeds will be arriving soon. Brave Little Leaf is considering using the wooden pathway to get to a secret patch of succulent grass he found on his past adventures. It's risky, but it might be worth it. He hesitates out in the open. Should he? Shouldn't he? No, maybe he should. Maybe he shouldn't. Maybe he should go back to where Petal is. No, he's going to do it. Leaf knows his hidden patch of greenery is around here somewhere. He just has to venture out into the open and onto this strange black stuff that lines the streets. He knows it's a dangerous area, with fast metal animals that sometimes come roaring past. But finally he finds it. Behind this two-legged contraption, the best grass in town, watered by all the sticky wet things that the humans throw in there. But as growing males do, Leaf is feeling brash after his success and decides to finish breakfast sitting right out in the open. The ever watchful Petal observes him from the safety of the dunes. She can hardly believe the risk he is taking. Satisfied with today's outing, Leaf makes his way back up the path. But wait, he might have waited a little too long. The two leggeds are here. He hides, waiting, making himself as tiny as possible but the legs just keep coming closer. It's time to make a break for it. He rushes into the safety of the bushes. Petal for one hopes he's learnt a valuable lesson, but it seems this close call has only made young Leaf even more curious about life outside the dunes. Peg is a boy duck, but has only recently found that out. As his body nears maturity, he's beginning to feel changes some of which he really loves, like the iridescence of his blue wing stripe. Oh, it's giving everybody goosebumps this summer. Peg had a tough time entering this world, with a hard hatch that was assisted by his human mum. Of course, as soon as he saw her, he was deeply in love, and so has been particularly bonded to his human family. Lucky for Peg, his difficult hatching didn't affect his confidence, and he was a cute and curious duckling and he's always loved trying out new things. Oh no! Even as a young duck, he took meticulous care of his new feathers. He's sexy and he knows it. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, oh, if you like that. <laughs> oh, time for your oh, close-up. You <laughs> oh, Peg, you're so photogenic. <laughs> hmm? yeah. The beautiful Jersey Shore. It might not be what you first think of when someone says animal documentary, but the birds and the bees certainly think it's the place to be this summer. Join us again next episode as we witness a beautiful birth, a sort of drug scandal, skinny dipping, and so much more. Until next time, stay chuffed everybody.